Hello and welcome to the results video for Seaside Screamer 4, a No Limits 2 contest that was held over the course of four weeks during the Easter holiday period. In this contest, people were tasked to build a roller coaster for a pokey seaside park in an undisclosed location somewhere in the UK. To tell you a bit more about the contest, let's hear from the two guest judges, Coasterbot and Digital Dan. Hello, it's Harry from Coasterbot, here to quickly introduce and remind you about the details of the template. The following roller coasters are being considered for Funland, a seaside park that has recently been purchased by brand new investors. These investors are quite picky though. They want a roller coaster that interacts with their brand new observation tower, crosses over the park's roundabout, and has a decent capacity. Essentially, they're looking to have the ride cover most corners of the park. Hello, Dan here, and uh, within Seaside Screamer 4, the coasters will be judged on various different aspects, including the forces the ride pulls, how the coaster has utilised the template, whether or not the supports for the coaster would actually fall down if it were in person, and the realism factor of each build. Before we get into the top 15, let's have a brief look at all the other entries we received. In 22nd, we have Titan by Martin169. In 21st, we have Siren by Curry XCX. In 20th, we have Vampire Squid by Next Gen Coasters. At 19th, we have High Tide by Kaiju Cult. In 18th, we have Serpent by Kyle LLD. In 17th, we have Space Fighting Capybaras by Robin Bob. And just missing out on the top 15, we have Blast by AK Coaster at 16th. And now, let's get into the top 15. In 15th place, it's Eclipse, a Macrides launch coaster by Helix. Very fitting name there. Overall, the aesthetics of the roller coaster work, especially the striking colour scheme and the inverted top hat which sits above the roundabout. The first half of the ride's layout includes a mixture of fantastic elements strung together really well. After the second launch, Eclipse seems to kick it up a notch, providing some incredibly snappy transitions, a little too snappy if they existed in real life. Sadly, it's this aspect which dragged the ride down. Nevertheless, overall, the roller coaster was well designed and had some fantastic interaction with itself and the surroundings, and it also looked the part. In 14th place, we have Tidal Surge by Dan Pan, the man. <laughs> I rate the name. This is an Intamin multi-launch coaster, seemingly inspired by well, most definitely inspired by Cheetah Hunt at Busch Gardens Tampa Bay. It's a solid coaster overall, has some decent pacing and some good elements with great interaction points around the roundabout and towards the observation tower. But the duration of the ride does seem to go on for quite some time and uh, the layout does end up becoming a little repetitive. So it's an amazing coaster, but if it was a little bit shorter and also didn't do so much of the same kind of thing over and over again, it may have ranked higher. 
In 13th, we have Mabel Chester Moving Groovin' Coaster by JP. And with a name like that, you know you are in for some wacky marrow madness. This coaster goes down the route of using as little of the pathway building area as possible and keeps the sightlines nice and clean throughout the park. The first half of the ride is excellent, utilising the space around the road perfectly. However, just like its real life inspiration, the ride starts to meander towards the end. A very neat and tidy ride overall though, and one of the most realistic feeling entries. In 12th is ML Design's Big Dipper, a ride which certainly delivers a lot of bang for your buck. Big Dipper features three launches, the first of which introduces us to the ride. The second kicks it into high gear, catapulting you into an incredibly cool element next to the park's observation tower. Ultimately, there was a great use of inversions throughout the layout. However, the ride type didn't seem to fit the bill. The small inline train design first leads to a poor throughput, but secondly lends itself more towards a compact roller coaster, one that weaves around itself, adding another layer of thought to the ride. Sadly, Big Dipper doesn't do this, but still remains very well designed. At number 11 we have Monster of Loch Ness by Casper Coaster Creator. A good ride that overall does its job very well, with a huge outer bank after the first drop, that's probably my favourite part of the ride, uh, alongside the stall over the roundabout section of the park that's very cool as well there are although a lot of elements that are quite drawn out and the coaster itself did feel a little bit short so if it was slightly longer it could have ranked a little bit higher a realistic coaster but definitely needs more for it to step any higher the tenth spot goes to one of my personal favorites of the entry pool Ardium by Axi. while it might not look like much this ride has a fantastic blend of high-speed elements and great pops of airtime throughout the large airtime here looks very imposing from the ground, and while one judge wasn't too keen on it, the pre-drop around the observation tower is some neat interaction. However, just like the previous entry, it just needed a little bit more, especially on the second half which cuts itself quite short. Definitely a sleeper hit though. Coming in at 9th is Helios by Kelton. Helios reminds us of Icebreaker, but better. It features an impressive triple launch which is visually striking thanks to the top hat element and the twisted reverse spike. It features a whole host of high speed elements, buckets of airtime, and some really awesome and well thought out dueling action. The inversion into the mid course is also another unique element of the ride, as is the zero g stall after the mid course which feels just a tiny bit too snappy in part. Overall, Helios is a fantastic roller coaster, which keeps up its pace and provides fantastic thrills along the way. At number 8 we have Sunscream by Christian G. This is a realistic B&M inverted coaster and overall it is such a good ride. The pacing of the ride is literally perfect and that zero G roll over the road the best element on the ride it's amazing it is quite high off the ground which at first i was a bit like that's a bit weird but it's very much like silver bullet so i see that and it also uses the space that it has very well even if the ride layout isn't the most unique thing for an invert but it definitely does everything an invert should do to a t Vintamin takes seventh with full tilt a mac launch coaster with a tilt track if uniqueness was a category i think this would have taken full points for sure the flow of the elements at the start of the ride is fantastic, with the second half amping up the intensity without being too jarring. Unfortunately however, while the tilt track does take the interaction with the roundabout to the next level, there is no doubt that it does significantly break the flow of the layout, and this ultimately is what allowed other entries to surpass it. Full props must be given with the creativity though, I don't think anybody expected something quite like this. Oh, and another thing, why is it brown? In 6th place is Breeze by Serming. This fantastic Intamin launch coaster may not be long, but it packs a punch with what it does have. The entire layout is relentless, whippy and fast, like super fast. Every inversion, including the cool roll after the launched lift hill, is well placed and integrated smoothly into the layout. The full loop around the tower provides some fantastic interaction, as does the Maverick style roll over the road too. All in all, Breeze maintains a super fast pace from beginning to end and really does deliver an intense ride. At number 5 we have Rip Curl by 
KW6S Theatre. This ride has a really good flow of elements and off-ride it does look incredible and extremely unique. Although some places on it we found had a lot more supporting than was probably needed so that could have knocked it down slightly. That element surrounding the observation tower is insane alongside the uh, outwards bank dive. Both of them incredible and yeah the ride definitely does what it intends to do and more and is an all-round insane coaster. Just missing out on the top three is Upsroth by El Cuckoo 3. This b and flying coaster layout was a surprisingly good fit for the space given, with a bunch of well put together elements. The pretzel loop in particular in the thin space of land behind the arcades and shops is a stroke of genius. All three judges were big fans of the fantastic fly to light element as well, and if it was real would probably be among one of the best of its kind. I also personally was a big fan of the little trick track element near the end of the ride, which in a flying coaster train would be a cool sensation. It must be said though that the ride does have a very strange choice for how it ends, with the final brakes also serving as the transfer track, and the storage tracks tilted upwards. An odd move for sure, but it doesn't take away from the excellent layout presented here. Here we go, it's time for the top three. Third place goes to Jackson G's Sea Dragon, a fantastic multi-launch coaster with three launch sections. Sea Dragon is an imposing ride, featuring a multitude of track. Despite this, the ride manages to lie closer to the ground compared to other entries, something we really appreciated. Interestingly, Jackson's coaster builds up its intensity throughout the layout, coming to a climax with the third and final launch, which is inclined into an inversion. The use of inversions and other quirky elements add another layer of uniqueness to the ride, helping it stand out even further. Overall, we loved Sea Dragon's interesting pace, its fantastic combination of elements, and its visually striking look. And at number two, just missing out on first place, is Voltage by Diligent Chaos. This ride is it's literal chaos your name puts it very well it is truly relentless with the way it hits its elements and the speed it carries is unfathomable it has such a good consistency in every single transition you whip round so fast but not to a death defying amount going left right then twisting into an inversion and honestly it's an amazing ride and it's actually the tallest entry that was sent in for this competition you can definitely tell even from the off ride that there is definite inspiration from Velocity Coaster, but that adds to it so much because this ride is so good not to mention it also uses the height difference in the track very well to ensure the pace is kept high throughout an all-round brilliant coaster but sadly it just missed the number one spot and taking the seaside scream of four cram with only one point, we have Morgor by PVM, making it a streak of two consecutive wins in the No Limits 2 contests I've held. Once again, PVM has delivered a coaster that takes the challenges of the template and produces one of the most well put together coasters we have seen. From the supports, to the track work, to the layout itself, the ride hits the mark bang on. Now this is what you call a proper roller coaster. PVM's ride makes fantastic use of the unique space provided by the Seaside Resort, whilst simultaneously including a flowing layout packed with interesting elements and inversions. I genuinely was in awe ever since it first loaded. That first drop is beyond perfect and the clear inspiration for it to be a ride similar to Exodus is spot on and it does what it sets out to do amazingly. Definitely a worthy winner and a great way to cap off this lineage of contests. And that brings us to the end of the Seaside Screamer quadrilogy, and we definitely went out with a bang. The score sheet for the contest will be available in the description to see the breakdown of any point deductions that were issued for those who want a bit more information. I want to thank Digital Dan and Coastbot for lending a hand with the judging for this contest, and also to those who took part, even if you just missed the deadline by a couple days. Until next time, 